Hello everyone, in this video we are trying to understand all things in Python API and this video is being adapted from the all things in tutorials and this is the summary uh, of those of those uh, tutorial and much more of the details are in the piece uh, Google Collab can be opened from there as well uh, we thank everyone and we want to thank the creators for developing this tutorial. We begin with the initializing the API to grant this notebook access to Orphans using our account. For this, we import EE. This is the Python API package. And after importing this, we authenticate and we initialize the library. So if we run this cell, we get the links and after a few clicks and approval, we get the verification code and we can uh, copy that verification code and run this. So this is the easy process. This can be done easily and I have already done this. So to understand the data sets, uh, uh, features contains geometric objects with properties, images are like the features, uh, it contains rasters and has different bands. And the collections are the group of features and images. So here we have the imported um, Modis Land Cover Collection, Modis Land Surface Temperature Collection, and the USGS Ground Elevation Image. So this uh, unique string is similar to uh, that being used in Arthur and Court Editor. This is the same thing. And this whole process is similar. The difference here is that we are not using the VAR that starts uh, in the line. And the other thing is that, as I have already run this cell, uh, here we have the tick mark signed uh, at the very next to the cell. So the difference is we don't provide VAR, similar to the Earth Engine, uh, Earth Engine Code editor. Uh, we have here initial dates and final dates, and we can select the uh, bands of interest. Here we are selecting the two bands LSD underscore A underscore one two meter and QC underscore J. And this has been filtered by dot filter date and with the two uh, interest dates. Similarly, we can provide the uh, points uh, as our area of interest. That is drawn by e dot geometry dot point. So to get the information about the location or about the point, this is drawn by dot sample. And after specifying our area of interest or the point, and after specifying the scale, we do dot first, and this dot first gives us the first collection. And after that, we specify the band by dot get, and we get the information. So this is to uh, print the elevation near the furnace. And this has been repeated to get the mean value of the uh, elastic collection at that point. And similarly, uh, for getting the land cover type at that point. So this is to use uh, the dot sample and providing the area or the points with scale and uh, getting the first collection and getting the uh, appropriate band and retrieving those information. We can see the results has been printed here. So there is another function that is dot get reason and this dot get reason uh, helps us to get all those information, all those um, uh, pixel values um, around the uh, range of time. So uh, here we are using dot get reason, our point and a scale to get the uh, pixel information. So we can see here different dates, uh, but here we can see the value as none because uh, it has been blocked by QC day. This is the quality indicator band. 
and maybe there might have been the presence of clouds, so the shield has been known. So the, uh, so the disadvantage of the uh, use of Aries is that it cannot be directly used for the um, graphs or for making the charts. So for that, we use the Pandas library, uh, which is analogous to the Power package in R. And uh, this helps to conversion or to convert the Aries to data frame. So here uh, we develop the function, which takes array values and list of bands. Um, we rearrange the header. Now we remove anything that has no data inside, and we convert the data to numeric values. And we also convert the time field into uh, date and time. And also we keep the one of the columns of interest. So this is the function. And this function is applied to this one here. Uh, using the uh, e underscore this one this function here for the points and for the bands and we also convert the uh, data set or the values into the Celsius so we get something like this and the other thing is that the uh, there are certain functions developed uh, according to the understanding of the uh, different data sets. And here is one function. And this function uh, can be applied as the fitting curve uh, to the uh, generated charts. So for that, we are using here the SciPy library. And uh, this matplotlib uh, is used to draw the chart. So we, uh, we first extract the all the x values, we extract all the y values, and we define the fitting function. Uh, so this is the, uh, here we have the line here, this is the function. So this function just uh, converting this uh, figurative function into the mathematical form. This is the mathematical form. So this is uh, similar to uh, any other function that might be developed. And we have some parameters of light to start. And then we uh, also optimize the curve. So this is to apply the plots. And we have the sort plots here. And we just develop the scatter plots and we add the fitting curves. So and after providing some parameters, we get something like this. So what we get here is the um, carbon data and roll data plotted as the points. And we also get the um, curve uh, that is being generated from that function. And we also can see that the uh, temperature in urban areas uh, is greater than the rural areas. So again, to go to this function, this is this function has uh, this function has been applied here, and some other uh, parameters are applied, and we get something like this. So after the after this, we also have the static mapping. This is to get the maps, or this is to get the raster uh, images. So here we are defining our region of interest with the buffer zone of 1,000 kilometer. And we get, the, um, we get the mean of the bands. Um, this has been converted to the Celsius after applying the scale factors. And for Displaying the mean itself, we have the ipython to display. So this is the library uh, from where we import the mean function, and and we provide the um, 
dot get dom url with certain uh, parameters with, of minimum maximum and other things and then we print url and this uh, image is displayed by image url and we get something like this so this is being repeated to the um, ground elevation as well this image uh, function is doing the job here Similarly, this can also be tuned to the area of interest. This is done by dot buffer, and we jump into the uh, into our main area of interest. So uh, this the image can also be drawn from the country level data um, uh, as to generate for the uh, country level uh, image. We have to use the administrative boundaries from we select our country, and uh, this is clicked by a dot clip, and we get the image for the country. And saving the uh, image is done by e dot batch dot export dot image dot to drive. Uh, so this is similar to the uh, art and code editor. And for downloading, we have can use dot get download URL. So after the task is, is started, uh, we can get the image to download. Um, we can download the image by dot get download URL and by generating this uh, link here. So the uh, disadvantage of uh, static mapping is that uh, it is. Uh, it is um, static, of course, and it is much more uh, helpful to printing. But if we are interested in much more interactivity of the map, uh, then interactive mapping might be helpful to play with the data and zoom or zoom out uh, from that area. So the um, so there is this package called Folium, and this package is for the interactive mapping and um, we import volume here, this package, and then we uh, can draw the map by volume.map. And here, are the specific location and the zoom level has been provided. So we get the map in no time. So to add the different layers to the uh, interactive map, here we, here we have developed the function. So this is just to uh, provide the different layers. We see this letter here, and uh, we select specific bands uh, for land cover. This is a rearranging or arranging of all the parameters for the uh, specific land cover. So here we are getting the map. And this map can be set in HTML by um, .zip. And we can arrange different visualizing parameters for different data sets for ground elevation, land surface temperature. Uh, and this all uh, the layers uh, has been arranged by this dot and e layer that we developed earlier. And this all this process was being done to arrange those uh, different uh, data set as layers. So we can see here, these are the three uh, different data sets uh, arranged as the layers here. So um, this is what we get here. And certainly this can be modified uh, for our own needs. 
So as to conclude, um, uh, conclude this video or to summarize, um, this is similar to Orthlin and JavaScript API. Of course, uh, we are using the Orthlin, and so um, things are similar. The difference here is that we can use different Python libraries, as we saw in those examples. Um, and uh, of course, the idea of the Python libraries or the knowledge to use is very important. Um, but we can see that the JavaScript API is more recommended uh, if we do not have those uh, working knowledge of Python libraries, or we need to learn uh, more about the Python libraries as well. Um, and if the uh, if the ideas, if, of course, if we do not have the ideas uh, of the Python libraries, uh, we can stick to the JavaScript, uh, JavaScript API. Um, because the Orthlint and Code Editor is uh, interactive, and there are more examples uh, in the Orthlint and Guides for JavaScript. Um, but hopefully, the, uh, the the flexibility in the um, flexibility is in the um, Python API, as you can work with multiple other Python libraries. So there is uh, some other helpful piece, uh, API piece in the Orphan Guides uh, is the good piece to look more. And uh, um, there are other tutorials within the Orphan tutorials. So this was the very quick and very rough, um, uh, rough video, I think. I tried to go through as much as I could and try to explain uh, what's in the code. So if this was helpful, uh, thank you for watching.